Three six five. Whoa! Shake my hand. New camera angle. I forgot today. I forgot. Uh, I normally have it here when I'm doing stuff with the senior traders. Uh, um, very good to have you guys. I promised you guys a war room. I've been busy, man. Today is Wednesday, the eighth of September. Let's line up swing trades for the month. Right, month of September. Right, NFP done. We killed it. I told you. Um, our, our structure was just yearning for 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 for, 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 for a dollar burn. I, and the dollar was burned, but then I mean I did coverage and all this kind of stuff. I don't know why NFP is still like a big deal to traders. Um, um, ADP on Wednesday took out a report uh, that the job saver completely failed. Euro USD structure is extremely bullish. Uh, if you watch my my episode episode four, how to two x five x ten x your trading account, that episode dropped on Wednesday before NFP, and we're already on those buys by pre uh, uh, pre NFP, right? So so all that's done and dusted. We now want to understand how this fourth financial quarter is going to roll. Couple of things. Remember, summer markets have to come to an end at some point. Remember, big banks, institutions, hedge funds, flows are going to start coming back. The thin, uh, uh, volatile market in the third financial quarter, which is my favorite, by the way, is coming to an end. And we're about to get some final awesome uh, trends, right, for, to, to end the year off. So we want to be in the know how, right? So I don't really have a textbook plan of, of how we are going to do this like you know like sometimes i know what assets to look for i'm thinking to do about three or four war rooms so i'm gonna go cluster by cluster last time what i did was i look at all the euro um um, um, um pairs and not nah, beautiful so i'm thinking of doing something like that so let's look at all the pound pairs in this particular war room the time now is about 11 a.m so i can only go on for about an hour hour 15 right and then i'll stop and then if there's a need i'll do a second war room later on today with maybe all the aud pairs and then tomorrow we'll look at the dollar pairs and and, and different crosses right so we'll cover our 25 min fx assets right and, and write them down track me i'm writing everything down this is war room 33 right so when i come out at the end of the year and i say in 2021 i gave out 300 and something signals and 90 percent of them were successful i have proof of this you should be doing the same thing writing these things down taking the trades seeing how our system works uh today is wednesday today is lecture two for our course so if you watch this on time don't forget you are more than welcome to come for free up until the ninth. We have started our full institutional trader structured course. It's going to run for eight weeks, three times a night, live on Zoom at about half past six uh, South African time to about half past eight, right? Come learn if you want to learn, right? I'll, I'll make sure the first link there, written live classes, that's the registration link you need to hit before the ninth, okay? Before the ninth, hit that registration link. Uh, technically speaking, you cannot enroll for the course after the 13th. So much would have happened. Um, it's better you just wait for next year for, for our next uh, live intake. If you don't want to wait for the live intake, you can always take our course via the remote course where all my lectures are pre-recorded and, and structured. There'll be about 50 odd videos, 90 recorded lectures, et cetera, et cetera. Right, but let's start. Let's start with uh, with our war room, uh, uh, with our war room for the day. So we're going to look at pound pairs. I'm a bit flustered. Excuse me. We're going to look at pound pairs. Uh, um, um, is this pound pairs? I don't know. Is it? Can you guys see this? Why? Why am I so confused today? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Right. So let's 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 uh, yeah. Let, let's start with this economic calendar and actually see what's going on. The economic calendar has been the death of many traders last week. And really guys, subscribe, share, like, and just follow our page. I cover this stuff on a week to week basis, right? So, you know, this was a non-starter, non-starter, not a big deal. I just wanna make sure I only have, you know, impact news, right? So we've got high impact, moderate impact news. We've got CAD today at four o'clock, interest rates. Um, it's not really part of what we're going to look at today, but we can look at pound cat and maybe see what that looks like. We've got uh, uh, some PMI overnight rate, not that big of a deal. All right, so policy hearings, right? It's important. Uh, our fundamental traders will be trying to pick up hawkish or dovish tones from all of this, but they won't be actual data sets, right? Uh, that will be released, but there will be some type of volatility. I hardly ever, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, sit down to, to kind of like weigh on it and take a trade on it because most of the times I'm already in a swing. 
Monetary policy statement, very important, right? And then there's going to be a press conference after that asking the questions, just like the pound, euro and pound, same family. You're looking for toads. So we're looking for, are we risk on or risk off? Between today and tomorrow, this is going to set the tone. Are we risk on at the beginning of the final financial quarter of the year or are we risk off, right? So these guys are going to set that, that particular pace. Uh, Bank of CAD. All right, so he's gonna he's, he's gonna then express you know his understanding of what's gonna happen to day four. You see there, there's gonna be a rate statement. Then he's gonna start to prepare CAD. CAD and oil are gonna run together. Remember that I've been warning you guys about this for a very long time. And then we we, we get the CAD NFP on Friday, right? So it's actually quite a big, big, big week for CAD. I'm starting to think maybe to change the plan a bit. You know, look at pound CAD, AUD CAD you know, Euro CAD, uh, USD CAD uh, that will give us four assets. Or should we maybe just look at all these assets and then we'll come across these CAD pairs. But it's a very big week for CAD, uh, unemployment rate, uh, you know, and, and just please, if you haven't learned what happened to your NFP, then just stay away from trading the stuff on Friday, right? If, if, if you're not going to take the time to back test every single NFP that's happened, it's only nine this year. Just go back to your charts and see where you went wrong. Just stay away from the markets on Fridays. Right, so let's start with uh, pound. Let's start with the pound. Uh, uh, and you know me, um, I, I like to center everything around the dollar. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a look first at the dollar index, which will come in handy. It always does. It's never failed us. It is a phenomenal place to go. Right, so we know NFP shook the markets on Friday, but but there was no surprise there, guys. I, I, I mean... I, 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 don't, I don't take any of this stuff lightly. I know some people are still stuck in different trading strategies. I know trading is hard for a lot of people, but there was no surprise here. All right, so if I can pull out the date. The date on Friday was the 3rd, the 3rd of September. That was Friday. So this is 27th, 1st, there. So this. So you can already see markets were already in a free fall, right? If, if you're just looking at this thing, Markets were literally on a free fall. They were already here on the first, right? Breaking these lows. So let's say you don't know supply and demand, right? Let's say you don't know how I trade. Let's say you're not an institutional based trader. Let's say you're a pure uh, price action guru and all, and all that kind of stuff. There's a break of market structure right here, right? You guys call that stuff BOS, right? So let's remove all of this. I'm just going to quickly replay some stuff for you. So markets do this. That is the daily time frame. So on the on the on the on the thirty first of August, right, uh, which is probably like on the Wednesday, right, thirty first of August was the Tuesday, the day before the ADP report comes out. So ADP is always a precursor to NFP. If you don't know that as a retail trader, you have no business trading NFP. So if you look here on Wednesday, it always comes out on the Wednesday, forty eight hours before NFP, right? The ADP non farm roll failed completely, failed. Right. So, but, but look at this on the Tuesday, markets break structure to the downside. Right. So, so what do you think was going to happen next? The ADP report came. Right. We started just buying Euro USD on my live account in front of you from the YouTube channel, etc. Right. So that's the ADP candle. Right. That that, that precedes everything. Then NFP joins us on Friday, the third. So the third is Friday. Look at this. So ADP ashes price out of this structure. But 365 traders, we knew it was a short buy uh, for Euro, uh, Euro USD. Well, I personally was in Euro USD, Pound USD, AUD USD, and obviously NASDAQ, right? And, 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 and I posted a lot on Thursday night. It's, all my stuff is recorded. It's all there on our page, telling you guys what's going to happen with the stocks, which stocks to get into, which stocks are going to benefit, etc. But price was pushing that dollar. What's this? What's this? Right, module two, if I've taught you before, value-based demand, right, into an area of value where consolidation has happened and there are more buyers and sellers. So NFP happens, we strike through, price hits a demand, just like it did in the last NFP, right? Somewhere here, there's an NFP that happened, where is it? Somewhere in here. Oh, it's this one, yeah, right there. And price rate, you just, you just, just check your disk, but somewhere in here, 30 August, there. The 3rd of August, I like to believe the 3rd of August, the previous month, was also an NFP Friday. I would like to believe that. Uh, no, it wasn't actually. It's the 6th. Where is the 6th? There was, there was a, 
No, okay, they might be earlier, far much more earlier, but somewhere here, president demand, you can see it left, hidden demand, you can see it left, it comes back into another demand, clearly prices left again, right? So, so it was just a simple place. So now the dollar is kind of like back in a free fall. Uh, and I say free fall because it is about to, 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 to touch a, 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 a new setting, a bearing on a specific type of supply right here. All right, so anything can happen in the next couple of days. Today is Wednesday, and then there's Thursday, and then there's Friday. So there's two more days in this week. So we could see you know, the, the dollar ending a little bit you know, weaker this particular week. Um, um, you know, which would give assets like pound a little bit of room to, to, to run, you know, uh, uh, we, we shall see. On the four hour time frame, it's just too late. There's nothing, if you're, if you're, if you're not in these buys, I'm, I'm not in any DXY buys right now. Unfortunately, all my DXY trades for the last two financial quarters, if you've noticed, have been sales, right? I've just been reselling. I, I told you guys, I'm only going to become a dollar boom if the dollar can actually show me viability of a trend. So we put this line up here at 95 bucks. If the, if the dollar crosses over here, then I'm a bull. Until then, all I'm looking for and waiting for are sell setups. I'm not in these buys, but I might want to start to, to, to really consider this, this sell off here. I might. Um, 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 I'll really need to see what it looks like on a, another smaller time frame. So let's see how it drops on the one hour. Okay, It's not not the best but it's good it's not the best because of this long week here that took out all these previous highs right why is market why is the market like 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 taking out previous supplies so so for me i'm worried right i'm worried about this liquidity rate that happened right there i'm not necessarily you know optimistic that it would be a good place to sell so i think for the dxy chart and, and, and in general i'll wait to see dollar weakness but I won't be taking a sell this time around. I, I, I'm, I'm not that happy with it. Number one. Number two, you know, if, if we're looking from a technical perspective, one would make the argument that there is a break of bearish structure happening right now, right? You know, with this break of market structure, as price went back up, price is creating order blocks right above there to make a statement to say we're not going back down. And so because of that, I would be silly. Uh, uh, um, to try and sell anything there. So you, you might see some continued dollar strength, you know, for the first two weeks of September, you know, up until um, 14th, there's going to be uh, our first inflation interest rate, right, to match NFP on the 14th of September or something like that. There's always a CPR every single month. These things go hand in hand. And then after that, there's going to be FOMC, right who needs to then consolidate what what nfp results mean and what it means for tapering which is something i've been talking about a lot in our channel uh, uh so let's see so this is the week of uh, uh, september the, uh, the the 10th this coming friday and then next week i'm pretty sure you're going to start to see some dollar news cpi has to come out fomc and there we go 14th <laughs> i actually like i really know this stuff now right so on the 14th we've got cpi big deal Right. If, if we pass or fail, they haven't even locked in their, their focus, which is fine. And I'm pretty sure in the same week, no, there isn't. So FOMC then might start to talk on the 20 something of the month, just before the month ends. FOMC, are uh, you there? There we go. FOMC projections, FOMC statements, FOMC press conference. This is a big, big deal, right? So, so that final second, third week of September uh, uh, will be kick off on Monday. So I'm going to see what happens on Monday. I'm going to see the kind of trade we're facing, how far up this push can go. Will it end? Will it drop? Um, if it does drop, that's what I'll be looking for. I'll be looking for setups there. If price delays, so this is on, this is on the H4 and the day, if price delays, takes its sweet time and only gets here on the 14th of September, then I'll be looking at that CPI data uh, next week, Monday, very carefully and potentially ready to make a play there, right? Because that's a, that's a strong supply of the H4, but it starts to weaken on other smaller time frames, right? So they didn't mix a lot of money here, number one. Number two, uh, there's, there is clean, a clean break of this very structure, price wanting to go up to the upside, so I don't want to force it, right? So, so we now know where the dollar stands. So now I want to talk about the pound. British pound, right? This is the pound index. I'm going to start from the monthly time frame. We've been ma mapping out this chart for a very long time, right? So this is, this, is on, this is on our governance structure. 
right? So Pond, you know, or the big banks have drove it back up to their own specific supply. To me, it always seems like they're making that supply weak, which is which is interesting because that calls for risk on, right? So that's the type of sentiment you would want to see. But they haven't broken the supply yet, and they are now on the other side of a trend line, which would insinuate some downward pressure right now. This is the pound index that I'm weighing off. Right, and if you see it, price tried to leave, then it came back up again. I'm going to drop it daily. Price tried to leave, it came back up again. Let's give it some uh, uh, um, weighted averages so we can see things clearly. All right, so we've got a double bottom here, right? Value based demand holding the fort is on the daily time frame, which is actually feeding our governor. Our governing structure is a higher time frame. So, you hear me saying governor. It's just a term we use inside our course when I'm talking about higher time frames, right? You're more than welcome to join us for free tonight, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday, right? So, so if you see this video on time, you can join us at half past six. You just have to enroll. We need your email address, right? Even if you don't pay, just enroll so that someone can send you uh, the Zoom meeting IDs. Obviously, you won't be able to join us from next week if you're not willing to register, which is also fine. But for those of you who want to see if we are real, do we exist, blah, 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 you know, you know, this industry is full of fears, right, and scammers and all that kind of stuff, you're more than welcome to come test the waters, right? But anyways, when I talk about government, I'm talking about, you know, strong, higher up structures, right? So you can see this is, this is the range that price has been dancing at between the 24th of July to where we are today, right? And, and this tried to hold, and I think it was popped. Yeah, it was popped. Right, so, so markets are slightly breaking smaller supplies, but they're not yet making higher highs, right? So, so it's still, well, we're still at a very, very precarious standstill. You know, I'm, I've been waiting for a stronger move to the pound. It's been nice buying and selling, you know, like a range trader, but it's really not what we do. It's really not what we want. We want proper swings to get us, you know, excited for the rest of the year. All right, so th this is what we're looking at here. But for the most part, price is coming down. All right, I, I, I do believe for the most part, price is coming down, which, which would make sense because that supply has not yet been broken on our governing structure. Uh, um, that supply is, is struggling. It's a struggling supply, but it's still a valid supply, right? So in a big price gap down and pound is now falling, right? And I think I saw a little bit of pound news coming up. Uh, maybe it was later on into the month. Um, um, that would be quite interesting to see how that affects what pound in Europe, right? They've got some very strong big weeks uh, 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 from next week into the second week of, of, the, of the month of September. So we'll see. We'll see how this plays off, right? So now like, I know what my index looks like. I'm, I'm just, I, I only have an hour, 15 minutes, guys. So I'm just going to pow, pow, pow. It's the war room. Remember in the war room? I'm not here to teach. I'm here to give you signals, but I'm here to do it in a transparent way so you understand my logic around price, right? So if you want me to teach, you have to come to class. So I'm going to rush through this kind of stuff, right? So, so I've been talking about this stuff. You can see here with a breakout structure, breakout structure, when price was previously bullish and then price got to my, my pre-tournament supply and triggered another supply. But let's, let's start from the beginning because that's the H4 time frame. Oof. Can't see anything here. I don't want to remove my notes, so let's just choose a different broker. Let's go to my teaching broker so I can start everything again on this thing. Right, so, you know, uh, 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 we are in the, we're literally watching the beginnings of what we would like to believe is the lost decade. If you don't know that kind of stuff, you read work by Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio, by the way, is the most successful, richest, and I, and I know he's not successful because he's rich. He's successful because he runs the most prominent hedge fund in the world, right? And so then Dalio, when Dalio talks, I listen, right? And, 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 and it's been, it was, it's been an honor to learn as much as I can. You know, some people can mentor you vicariously, by the way, from far away, right? That's why we like books at 365. I don't need to meet you. I don't need to join everything that you do. If you can put your ideas down in a book and it's a good book, you can mentor me through a book. So I would suggest you pick up every single thing that Ray Dalio has ever written. Um, 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 uh, uh, it's been such a pleasure being a student, but just by through his books. I've never met the man. I never emailed him, never called him, never nana, but, but I definitely sit through his teachings, right? Principles of success. 
uh, uh, economic debt history. Those are classic books that actually explain financial markets, right? If you really want to understand what's going on here. But yeah, I do agree. And I like, I expanded his thought process and I'd like to call 2020, 2030, the lost decade, right? And, and you can see price breaking out. This is the 2008 crash, 2007 banking crisis crash that crashed the markets where the banks made a lot of money, but still crashed the markets. Price is finally breaking out of that. You know, last night in my introductory lecture, right, to new students who are joining the academy, I started to break down a couple of things. Number one, markets are not random. That's number one. Number two, banks think in three months have a one-year profit-taking target in a 10-year plan. You can see this on every single chart, right? Is you somebody just to teach you how to see that when you understand their plan, you, you, you can then line your money, your, your 0 0.01, 200 US dollars alongside their big plan. That is what gives you high probability trading setups when you trade like the banks. Now, price is, is breaking out of this. It's trying, right? This could be a fake out. I mean, if you look at Euro USD off the top of my head, there were many fake outs. Uh, and these fake outs take months to create, right? Many, many, many fake outs. Uh, 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 if you were to draw it like that, okay? And then you were to take the first, oh man, I don't want to ruin this chart. Let's go to Euro USD, the teaching chart, so you can see it there. All right. So, those people who, who don't want to ignore touches would have to draw a trend line like that. You see that there? Then this would have been the problem for them, right? Fake up. And there's the monthly chart. You got one, two, three, four, five months, right? And, and then and then you know the downtrend didn't stop. The downtrend just continued, right? So what does this mean? You can get that as well. Price is allowed. And then eventually, you know, you, you get some type of reconstruction. But for the for the most part, if you're looking for a lot of consistent touches. Then you're just better off doing something like this. But even then, on the weekly time frame, you will get a lot of oh, on the daily time frame, right? This on the daily time frame is a lot of days where traders got faked out terribly. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Show you what I mean. If there's time, can you zoom in? There we go. Right. So look at that. I, I that's from the 15th of January 2018 all the way to May 2018. January, February, March, April, May, five months <laughs> of, a, of, of a fake trade, <laughs> right? It, it, it takes time, but look, let's not get lost. You can back test everything that I'm showing you. I've just given you the tools to do that right now. It's a simple thing. So now we want to understand what I think is going to happen to the pound this month, number one. Number two, we want to also see where we can then join the party, right? So what I'm saying is, they, they, this could be a potential fake out. This breakout right now could be, but it needs for it not to be a fake out. A supply has to be removed. And and and, and three six five traders, specifically you guys, the ones that, are, that I'm teaching and mentoring. I'm hoping you are starting to have the patience of Moses, right? If you know the story of Moses, you will know that Moses was not a patient person. In fact, to this is in patience. He actually never got to the promised land. Right, but, 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 but they worked on him. God worked on him for patience, patience with people. That sometimes you can, you, you, you can help people escape Egypt, but people bring Egypt with them in their mentality. Even if the supply is removed, 365 traders, my, I, I don't know if the Reserve Bank of England will have enough buying power to push price up immediately before first revisiting revisiting a strong demand. Fundamentally, this demand is amazing because it's broken a bearish structure, but we need this demand to put to be put to work, to break a equal supply, an opposing supply. That's when we know we've got the trend. We've got the new 10-year trend. If this happens, we get a risk on trend because pound USD, Euro USD, AUD USD, NZD USD, all your, they'll run the same. They all look the same. I've done this many times before in my classes. Look at this. This is pound USD, right? Look at the structure here real quick, real quick. Time is moving. This is pound USD on the monthly time frame, right? Cool. Let's move on. Euro USD. I know we're there right now, but you didn't see it. This is Euro USD. Let's go to Saxo. I'm getting excited, man. I miss doing this. You see this there? Euro USD on the monthly time frame, breaking that banking crisis structure. But, but what, what's going on here? Stuck in the supply. 
stuck in a supply, right? Is that enough? Not yet convinced? AUD, USD, let's go, let's go. Same thing, boom, right? Structure from about 2010, banks think in three months, take profit in one year, in a 10-year plan. This uptrend comes to an end in 2011. 10 years plus that is 2021. COVID comes in March 20, Euro USD, Pound USD, AUD USD, NZT USD, use COVID as a reason or a financial backing or a lot of money is pumped in for them to break that structure. But where is price now? Stuck in a supply. Not yet convinced? It's okay. I got a little bit of more time. NZT USD. You need to know your assets. You, you got to know, what are my safe haven clusters? When things are wrong, where do the banks put money? When things are good, where is it more good to put money, right? This is it. So, so, so let's go to NZT USD. Let's go to SAC. So I don't want to remove my notes on my, on my link in, uh, or on my chats that are linked. Right. What's this? This is 2011, just like the previous chart. Price came back in 2014. Breakout structure, let's zoom in a bit. Let's find the supply. It's not yet clear from where I'm standing. There we go, got a couple of bearish engulfing patterns right there, holding price down, right? So all these supplies are waiting for something. And if you notice, I know in pound USD, I drew a demand there, which is correct. But every time a structure was broken, an order block was created. Every time a structure was broken, there's the order block there. Was created. And so that's all price need. This is a valid governor's uh, um, overdraft. So all we're waiting for in this chart is to see money. We want money to move there. Take it out. All right, let's go back to pound USD. We want money to move there. If money can move and take out that opposing area of value, we are game. If it doesn't, we have problems. All right, so, so, so I'm going to slow down. But, but, but I'm, I'm just hoping that I, I, that short-lived helped you, right? There's, there's, there's something here. There's something there, right? And, and, and who has led the way? Remember, let's tell you guys, uh, those of you who follow me very well, look out for primary markets versus secondary markets. In the currencies, they are primary markets. They will move first. You might miss it. It's okay. Study them. Then take that blueprint to secondary markets indices between Nasdaq and US 30. One of them is a primary market and one of them is a secondary market. That means you only need to identify one of the two. When the primary moves, instead of risking money there, trying to catch something that's happening, go wait by the secondary because you're going to get the same ripple effect. Look at pound USD. It hasn't left the supply to come to the demand, to go back to the supply. But you know what? Euro has. Look at Euro USD carefully. Euro has done that long time ago, been there, done that, you know, had fun. Look at where its, it's order block was, very close to the supply, right? And this is literally what's been happening this whole year. This is December last year, then first financial quarter into March, second financial quarter, back to the supply. Third financial quarter, we're here now. I will, this is September now. That does all in all three financial quarters, prices move from supply to demand, demand to supply, like a tennis match. Now I'm saying in pound USD chart, which because I've got the pro account here, it means I can actually put them side by side for you so you can see them. You see this there? You see this activity? If I look at pound USD, not much has happened. On at least not at that level. Should have gotten myself something to drink. My partner's on the other side of the house with the baby. I'm gonna die of thirst. I'm gonna cut this thing short. Ah oh, man, I'm trying to get saxo. Saxo chat here. Is it saxo? No, really. But where, where is the chat where we're working? Let's get Owanda in. I see, I see the chat with less noise. Yeah, without any notes. Right, fantastic. So. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna draw some zones for you. I'm gonna draw some zones for you. There is this demand here. Delete that. Um, quickly, quickly. I so it's really I I I am breaking my own rules. I'm teaching. I should not be teaching. I should just be giving out signals. Then go trade and we're gone. Look at that. So clean market structure break break to the upside. But like I warned, there is something stopping price here. Right. 
but you can see price hasn't actually made it back there, all the way down there. But if you look carefully on Euro USD, you get similar structure, but more movement. Price has gone up, down, up, down. Primary market, secondary market, right? So now if Euro decides to use this financial quarter to break this demand and go to the downside, which is what I really want, because I can then get a positional trade here going up until next year. And I can set up many swing trades for the next six months of my life, lodging up and up and up. And we know our next bus stop is somewhere up here. Sorry, that was poorly drawn. Some, uh, let's see if I can completely undo that because that's just going to confuse a lot of people, right? So we know our next bus stop is somewhere there, right? Which is perfect. But now it means I have to wait for this zigzag to happen as well here on the primary market, right? So, you, so you, you're you learning your stuff. You're learning your assets as they, you know, as they present themselves to you. But in any case, uh, uh, um, we shall see, you know, how it plays off. But right now, price is hanging. Uh, 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 on for dear life on on pound USD uh, uh, inside a, a very weak supply, right? So that always has me very worried. Granted, we always wait until the governor tells us what to do. But if the governor is playing mind games like this, it's terrible. It's terrible for price because all price is going to do eventually is it's just going to lean towards the side with the most money at the time. So are there more buyers or more sellers? And whatever the answer is, that is where these candlesticks will go. If there are more buyers inside the supply because of how many times, I know in support and resistance, they tell you the more times price hits an area or a, a, a supply or, or resistance, whatever, no, a support or resistance, you know, the stronger that area is. That's a lot of bollocks, right? It's, it's absolute rubbish. The, the more price comes to an area of value, the less money there is. The less money there is, it can't sustain. Right? So we need price to either leave or break. All right. So, so now we start to work on our top down analysis. Look at this weekly time. Frame. It's a mess, right? It's just a mess within a mess, right? When price first created the supply, clean pick supply, bullish engulfing pattern, which I think I need to mark up so I know where the true cell is. The true cell is here. This is the true cell inside this entire mess of sellers. That is the true cell. That is why every time price arrived there, it got rejected. That is why every time price came, they created a new peak and then dropped. Right, that's the true cell. But if you look at this setup, which was clean drop, and you look at this consolidations, uh, arise consolidations, and then no, no movement, you, you can tell that the buyers and sellers are in a very, 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 very intense war. Here, right? Consolidation of the downside, price explodes up. Fantastic. We're very happy for you. But then now you've got this sideways consolidation, and we're not entirely sure when is when is price gonna break down to the downside? Is price gonna break out to the upside? You know, one would want to hedge his money towards the downside. But the other problem with the weekly time frame is you're starting to learn how close the buyers are. So the buyers are just there. These are big buyers, right? Weekly is not a game. They're literally fighting with positional traders who want to sell. And they're like, no, we're going to catch price here. And they have. They caught price there for the week of the 19th of July. Price came back on the 9th of August. They maintained it. 23 August, they maintained it. And price is back inside that consolidation zone. All right. So, so, so this area is now the problem. Right. Remember, I'm looking for trades that I can take, you know, in the now for this coming week, for this coming month. And I need to be very, very careful about which side I, I'm going to place my bets on. Right. Because if, if I buy when these institutions are selling, I'm going to get smoked. I'm going to be the casualty or, you know, or, or, or every single retail trader story. So now I'm on my favorite time frame in the world, the daily time frame. I'm just going to start to draw proper supply and demand zones in here. So I understand, you see my imbalance with this met. If you don't know that, again, I am teaching starting from, started last night. And, and I, by the way, lecture one, module one is on YouTube. It's literally on YouTube. Lecture one, module one from last night is on YouTube for free. So you might as well just go watch that so you understand these terms that I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm using. All right, lecture one, module one is literally on YouTube. Uh, um, I'm just gonna write this down. Right. So I, you know, when I'm looking at the daily time frame, you see I've got the strong supply that was created a long, long time ago in June. 
And this was when we're trading stuff in July. And one of these was, was a very good reaction. So we've got supply demand, supply demand, price reacting, you know, behaving, literally just following suit. We've got this here, which was broken, right? So price could go higher next time. If you don't know what I'm referring to, uh, I hope I'm hoping there'll be time for me to explain again, please, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm not really here to teach. I'm simply here to give signals. I'm here to give you my 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 understanding of where I think price will go up or down. Um, um, and for now, we are floating to the downside, right? For now, we, we we are going to maintain this momentum for a little bit. So choppy, such a big mess. I mean, look at all of this. What what decisions could one make? The consolidation uprise, complicated three six five three candlesticks, uh, bullish engulfment candle with a test. Uh, it's a mess. Uh, so for me, I am not going to to. This is, this is one of those last charts I'll come to. I'll come to pound USD towards the end, right? On the H four, it's ten times more clear, right? So that downtrend is literally screaming. There we go, an uptrend broken with a consolidation of selling. We should have sold yesterday. I'm not in this trade, but if you wanted to be in it, you should have jumped in yesterday. I, I, I know there'll be cowboys who are going to jump in now and be like, ah, wow, I mean, come on, let's do it, right? And yeah, you, you can try. You can try, cowboy, but if price changes its mind, it's your funeral, right? But, but if this downtrend maintains, then we're looking at this. You know, at, at the very least, I mean, you will get uh, a days where, you know, there, there's a lot of retracements. The retracements will start there. There will be another retracement here. But if you're a swing trader, for the most part, you want to make you, you want to make it down there. I will only put a pen in order to sell up here. So if all of this goes down without me, I'm fine. But in the event markets, before they come down, first come up, then I'll want to sell there. I am not going to jump into this trade as it is right now. It's too late. If I wanted to, I should have sold yesterday or I should have entered there. So I'm going to wait for some type of, you know, fake out, blowing off accounts, just hunting retail traders. And then if they want to go down again one more time properly, I'll go down with them. Hope that makes sense. So it's, it's really, there's nothing too exciting for me that's making me gravitate to pound USD right now. I mean, I have been, I've been buying this a lot. Every time the dollar is weak, Every time I'm selling the dollar, I'm buying pound USD. So right now I'm not selling the dollar because the dollar is moving back up. So I'm, there's really not, not much for me to do uh, on pound, right? So pound Swiss franc, and I hate the Swiss franc. This, this, uh, this is my, my life. Let's go to a teaching chat where we can, we can make these decisions. Can I actually see what my notes are on pound USD? on my on my link that comes this is the one that i'll also share on our public telegram group where i think i last told people to sell it that fib level they told people to buy and i don't know if people bought there was a short-term buy price went up then there was a break of structure and it was a fib level you know we've been eating this thing you know just based on the dot starting off with dxy uh, and i think there's that 16 june this is my big sell that i'm patiently waiting for, for price to get there Right, and then uh, uh, price broke structure, came back down. So this is already played out and done its job. We can remove it. Now price is actually moving back down. We can remove that. The supply for me is broken. It's done its job. And so now I'm gonna go to daily just to double check what's going on there first, just to see if there is, yeah, I see, I, it's just, it's such a mess, right? So consolidation drop, consolidation drop. That's the game pound has been playing. Consolidates for four to five days, which is pretty much a trading week, right? And then drops, you know, for the next week. And then they needed a, a, you know, a nice consistent uptrend into a new consolidative supply area, just below that 6.18 bearish trend that started this whole consolidation drop pattern. And now it's just broken up. So yeah, definitely, I'm right. Definitely a sell this week might even last into next week. Uh, and if you want to, to trade and you're a cowboy, you're like Leroy, I don't wanna be like you and wait all the way up there, then, then, and that's fine. I wanna wait all the way up there because I'm not that excited about this trade. When I'm not excited about a trade, I don't see why I should ever risk my capital. But if you are one of those people who want a cowboy trade and you're gonna have to wait for uh, you know some volume, you wanna see price really leave that consolidation, then when price comes back into it, then you want to take the sell right there. Right? And I might take that sell with you over time. 
I would suggest you avoid these buys anymore. The short-term buy has already happened. Price will probably bounce here to allow you to sell. Don't become part of the buy, right? In case the buy doesn't even sustain and the selling pressure is strong, right? It's not a good idea to buy. So I'm gonna remove this now. The buy has served its purpose. Just wait for some sort of retracement to happen. Price might come back here or might come back there. That becomes a green candle, we'll see. We shall see, right? So, so, so that's what I'm thinking for pound USD. I just need to check my notes, right? So pound Swiss franc. I barely trade this pair. I barely trade things with um with Swiss franc in them, right? Let's find a, a clean chart. And the reason for that is I just don't like the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc basically is a parasite, right? It, it's strong when dollar is weak and weak when dollar is strong. It's considered a type of a safe haven, but it's a third cluster safe haven, right? You've got, first of all, you've got, you've got JPY, you've got dollar, you've got gold, and you've got uh, for an inflationary hedge, Bitcoin, right? And then you've got Swiss franc as well that operates as some type of a safe haven. Uh, but I, I, I honestly don't like its functionality. Um, so I hardly ever trade it. Also, it's got a lot of like long wicks, a eh? very annoying, uh, sharp, violent long wicks, right? And, and these, these are not really that great for trading. Uh, if I go here to 2015, we can see, you know, a trade, a downward trade trying to flatten before a new drop. And, and, and then essentially price just, you know, falling, falling by the wayside. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You could try something like that if you wanted, but essentially, this you know, from 2015 downward trends trying to come to an end, but then breaks out only to create an inner downward trend. As far as I can tell, it's not like a breakout to the upside, it's a breakout sliding down. Uh, and then if I come to the weekly time frame, we've got something extremely similar, but now you've got You've got the kind of structures you want to see if you are holding a south position. You've got this long term, long ago uh, supply holding its power, right? Even through a potential break of market bearish structure. Look at the supply, right? Pushing price down. And then again with the pound, man, you've got weeks. This is the weekly time frame. Why would you trade something so like this? I mean, I mean, if you're a range trader, if you're trading strategies for ranging markets, no, then this is heaven for you. But this is ugly. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 weeks of pure consolidation. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous, right? So markets are just trading sideways and then you've got this big downward candle and then markets are coming back up to retest. So yeah, for me, staying away from this stuff until it makes a decision because on a technical perspective, one would make the argument, it needs to hit the trend line, it needs to hit the trend line. And, and, and if it does, for it to go up, then I'll wait here. No, ain't no rush. I'll wait there. I'll wait all the way down there. But until then, I'm going to do nothing on pound Swiss franc. I have no interest in this asset at all. So to save time, I'm going to move on. Pound JPY. Look, we'll always look for JPY assets after NFP. Okay? After the Friday of NFP, that whole weekend, Look at all the JPY pairs. There is a lot of movement there because remember, either the dollar is now again a safe haven or no longer a safe haven, and that will have positive or negative or some type of impact of NFP. All right, so 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 always look at at how JPY pairs are playing around the following week. Um, um, all right, so I've got some notes. You expected more downside, and it seems like it was happening. It seems like I was right. But let's go create our own new notes for this war room before we consult those ones right there, right? So I am on the governing structure. That goes back to 1990. Okay, something like that, which is fine. It's not really... The most helpful and then something like this but uh, you know over time you can get a break out and then markets will come back down so this is a clean self profile asset which makes a very a lot of sense pound is very risk sensitive the yen is indeed a safe haven all right so you can expect a little bit of pump pump uh every now and again all right so then the price then you know continues down sorry i actually want to see 
how you know the cluster here. And when I'm doing that, I'm actually trying to track if I've told you before. Remember, at the end of the day, we also want to know what the immediate areas of values are. Where are the immediate areas of value? The ones that are going to affect my trading today. You want to see that? I would definitely have another one here. Definitely. Okay. All right, so markets are just kind of like leveling out. Didn't break this demand, held it, used it, but did not break it. So we don't, we, we can't really say it's got strong intentions of tricking us and going to the downside, All right? If they if they wanted to do that, they would have to remove the demands and, and stop creating new demands along the way to catch price, right? This is, a, this is our strong supply. It's got a, a fresh touch, but barely, so, you know, you know, used up the money in the order blocks. Second touch, barely using up the money in the order blocks. We know what happens when price makes contacts, price drops. Price is also in, now in touch with a strong long-term psychological level from 2007 during the big market crash where price dropped, right? So, so, so this is very likely, right? Price hit there, price drops. We are not sure if these wicks are gonna get filled. We shall see. This is probably markets from the daily time frame or eight four time frame. Price have really removed whatever demand this was on a smaller time frame. Yeah, I expect this to drop. I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I do want this to drop. I actually just remembered this is this is a very good trade for me. <laughs> I have a pending order for for pound JPY. This is a three thousand US dollar trade. If I get it right, um, um, a long term swing trade. I want this to drop. I want this to drop. I want this to drop. Right. So there's a difference between wanting something to happen and does the market want it to happen? So let me just uncheck my bias. Price has been, you know, bouncing up here for a very, very long time. Right. So I can do something like that. I can project that. I can delete this. This is just something we're doing in class together. Okay. It really doesn't matter how price is going to negotiate in this range, you know, whether it's going to do that. Or whether it's going to do that, right? At the end of the day, it needs to do that, right? So that's my humble opinion. But it could seek out higher sells, right? I mean, pound JPY well, is one of those trades that really did me dirty once upon a time and seeked out a higher sell. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised or mad at that if it did. But um, this consolidation and sliding to edge the downside is terribly annoying, right? Because I'd like price to make it to my, my pending order somewhere here in this yellow box. Stop loss just right above. And then we'll write first take profit, obviously, at this level, even though I do believe that this demand was removed a while back. Right. And it was removed, you know, quite strongly. All right. And, and then we shall see. So, so I'm looking for... A very clean R and R of one is to four five, I believe. There's a sell position for us to enter somewhere here. Uh, sorry, and then put my stop loss somewhere there, and then run for this until there. That's almost one is to four, right? Very much so. One is to four. So yeah, so I'm definitely interested in something like that. I'm not gonna rush now and say prices rate get me sell. Not gonna fall for that. I'm gonna wait carefully, right? So this is the first trade I'm actually putting down in my trading journal. Uh, I do know I've got on my big account. It's definitely uh, 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 I've got a stop loss of about three thousand US dollars just for this trade, and then one is to four. I'm, I'm hoping to average out at about 12, 13 k, but we'll shall see. But I think I should add it into my journal to add it into my other smaller accounts as well, right? This is this is good. Good mileage, very, very good. R and R one is to four. And I'm gonna write daily chart here. And I, and I know you can find far much more better lucrative entries on the H4, H1, but for my swings, I really wanna make sure I, I can completely see what the banks are doing. Now you see the sideways movements that we're looking at here and then the drop is fundamentally based on a lot of things, right? It's based on this stuff here that's going on. Right, so consolidation, consolidation, but price is refusing to leave. It's trying to, but refusing, and it's being caught out here. So we'll see 
who wins what. But I, I really would pray for this supply to be removed in the next week or so, so that price can finally make it here. The other thing that I did not like about this trade, by the way, is the fact that we don't really have a very convincing uh, true sell, unless if you look at something like this, which is not that convincing, right? It's not that convincing. Right, so so one could be you know a whole lot cautious and wait for for price to actually get all the way up here for their entry, and then so that you know if you're not triggered, you're not triggered, but you don't want to take a you know a chunk of uh, you know high risk on this trade only to be you know left holding dust. Let me just adjust this a bit. Oh, I can hear my little girls awake now. Right, there we go. So it, it, it almost pushes it up to one is to five. And we know that they're going to be retracements or one or two retracements along the way. And as the price drops into it right now and uses this order block and then moves all the way back up. Right, but pound JPY for a potential sell. Right, so that's awesome for a trade for you. Pound AUD. Pound AUD, I'm going to talk to our governor. All right, there we go. I'm just quickly removing this because then this is my teaching note, right? So, so this thing, guys, is 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 fighting back. Like, like, like most of these assets, right? They, they they were sell profile assets for a very long time. Sell, sell, sell. They're starting to kind of like slowly but surely start to create a ladder, you know, to the top, you know, in in the event of or. or of, of potential price action. So there's a bearish engulfing pattern, a strong supply has been created, you know, markets dwindling here and there, and then markets kind of like turning around here. Uh, for me, this is already a sign that there is not a single trade that I can take. It's like a non go, go, go trade zone right now. I cannot even afford to do this. So there. Right now, is I only trade when price arrives at my 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 supply or demand zone. I cannot take risks. Like I can't just randomly, you know, push a button to buy or sell because I feel like it. Right, and then yeah, maybe I was unfair. Maybe this is a nice touch to a supply, but I didn't like it. But price reacted nonetheless, and price is dropping nonetheless on the daily time frame. You can see a very strong, like I'm saying, strong downward push. You know, leaving that area of value, and on the daily time frame, you know, there are a lot of things ready to catch price. You know, one of them has already happened. Uh, but again, from the governing perspective, you know, we haven't really, uh, yeah, we we're technically leaving a demand that we are leaving a supply. You know, it took that fifty percent retracement for a sell, and then price has been selling for the last two months. Yeah, so, so you know, it, it is what it is based on the weekly supply, but our governor has not truly been activated, right? I mean, unless if we can consider area of competition there, but still price didn't arrive there, right? So, so it, it, it's, a, it's a tricky one, but if you want to take short-term trade, then yeah, you're looking at what your daily is doing and your daily is selling off and retracing, then selling off and retracing. So you want to pull out a fib, right? You want to call anti swing remember this right that's all you need to draw fibonacci upward or downward fib so there you go pull out your fibonacci and we're looking at 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 50 percent and and our golden ratio actually so somewhere there i'll do that then i'll delete our fib delete our anti anti swing swing high swing low it's what we call in the academy swing high swing low Right, and then you will note that somewhere here is a potential for a, a, a good, uh, you know, entry sell if you want to rejoin this trend. So somewhere here, price could rock. But again, markets for me have not made contact with the governor, and so because of that, uh, I'm, 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 I do think in the long term the buyers will prevail, right? In the long term, buyers will prevail. But you could get like a week of something that looks like this, you know, again, something like that. I don't know. I'm not interested in pound AUD. It's not clean. It's not clear. I want to make clean, clear money. I want it to, 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 to talk to me. You know, as soon as I see that chat to say, yes, there is no confusion here. The banks are here, present, right? So 
Uh, Palm Cat has been training. This might change, right? This might be the month where this changes. We spoke about this in our previous forum. I don't know if you guys remember, but this might be the week this changes, right? We've got a lot of news around cap. Cap very much linked to oil. Oil it needs to go all the way up, but it's currently a retracement, but did break a supply. So we know it's going to go up. If it oil goes up, CAD strengthens. If oil goes up, CAD goes up. If the job numbers are good for CAD on Friday, was it this Friday or the other Friday? Which Friday? This coming Friday. So if this is good on Friday, if what else, what else, what else? If this sounds hawkish tomorrow, today, Wednesday, four o'clock today, well, I'm filming this today. If this comes out hawkish, you wait. And then you're going to see on Friday, if, the, if these numbers come out good, I mean, I can read the job claims and, and predict exactly the number, like I've been doing the NFP. Guys, with the NFP, I haven't just been predicting direction. Uh, those of you who follow me carefully on, 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 our, on our, our war room, on our public pages, I literally tell you what I think the job number is going to be. I have not missed a single NFP. It's not because I'm a genius or, 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 or magic or a guru. No, I just put in the work. There is absolutely no one, no one, eight years in, who will ever outwork me in financial markets research. That's it. That's my secret to profitability. I put in the work. That's what I teach students. Put in the work, and I'll show you what the work is. Right. So, 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 so I could spend, you know, Thursday because because I, I never really sit down to, to kind of like review the CAD reports, you know, etc. But it's there. There's a high possibility. If you look at what. Uh, they're doing the exact same thing as the US. They, they reached 94K in the previous month. Now they're dialing it a bit down. So we shall see. Just look at this kind of stuff and then come here. This might be what breaks us out of this range in the long term, right? So this is a monthly uh, chart, so it won't be just an easy break. But if there are any consolidation of the smaller time frames, then we can break out of it, right? To the upside or to the downside, it is just going to depend, right? So let me just have a look at this weekly chart much more clearly. Let me remove these support and resistance nonsense lines so that I can actually make sense of what's going on here. All right, so for the most part, price spiked as much as it could to break as many supplies as it could before losing all the steam it had. These ranges are not random. They, they, they located a demand and now hover just above it. They are not random. They're located a buyer's area away. You know, when I teach you module two supply and demand curve, you better bring that here because I can tell you these things are not random. They're literally hovering around the supply and the demand and they're trying to, 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 to kind of like, you know, figure out who would be the best choice for them, right? Who is at arm's length you know, all you need to do is to make contact and then money flows in or out. All right, bullish engulfing pattern. You can see it, it's hiding inside here. See that there? Not random. So all of a sudden it complicates range, trained, uh, range traders techniques. Right, so I think there's a lot of glass effect here, but price has been holding, right? Holding for a very long time. If I can just draw a line that looks like this. You can see price has been sitting in this area for a while. All right, so it's proven to, to be of value to price. And then if I can just psychologically draw an area somewhere here, it would look something like that. Right, so, so essentially stop loss hands, 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 you know, stop loss hands on the other side, stop loss hands. So, uh, uh, yeah, so this is waiting for something. It's waiting for news, some type of big news. So I think that the, the, the high CAD impact news will change the game here. Remember, if it's positive, CAD will fly. If CAD flies, this has to drop. If it's negative, this will fly. If this flies, CAD has to drop, etc. cetera. And, and, and that's simply, you know, as it comes. And if you see how it keeps breaking, it breaks more supplies than it does demand. I can tell you that right now, that this thing wants to buy. As a structure, it wants to buy. So if this comes out negative for CAD, if they, if they instead of creating 67,000 jobs, they created 40 or 50 or 30, right? Then, then we're all gonna wish we had bought here. And we're just holding and waiting. We're all gonna wish we had bought here. And we're just holding and waiting. This thing is gonna fly and, and finally get out of these things. But unfortunately, I hate it when markets rage. 
there's not enough action. It's not worth a dollar to me because my risk to reward ratio is immediately impacted on. Final pound trade, guys. And yeah, we are, we are, we are well out of time. We are well out of time. My partner needs to go to a spinning class. I need to go babysit while she's at spinning, yada, yada, yada. But we're done. We did all the pound pairs that I've been looking at. And so far, for me, for me so far, I've got pound JPY as a clean trade so far, right? Remember, I'm going to come back and do other classes, other assets. You can't, you can't have great setups all the time everywhere, right? You have to really dig for these things. Right, so let's start again. So we've got some teaching notes here, which should help us go through this a little bit quicker, right? So we've got the governing demand of one, which has been activated, price came into it, and then price went up, up, stopped at a weekly supply one, we'll go find out where that weekly supply is, and then turned back down to what seems to be a weekly demand here. So the story played out, and I think I do remember teaching this in a class, and then now we're waiting to see if price will ever get to a governing supply one, because it left a governing demand one here, but it hasn't made it all the way up there, because this is that, 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 right. Now, if I go to the weekly time frame, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we missed it. I should have hosted a warm. I was so busy with um, registration and preparing for the course. I couldn't host one on Wednesday. This is us. We should be in the spire right now. Like a clean entry. I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, we missed it. And, and guys, these notes are recent. So the whoever I taught recently, I hope you remember this chart and you took it, right? We literally missed it if i had hosted a war room on sunday we might have been in this thing right value-based demand supply and demand number five look at that found this nice bottom and now price is slowly making its way up we hope all right so if this pushes up then you might be lucky to get a retest after it's broken this it's trying to break it you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping for a positive close. And number one, number two, I want to see price climb outside of this demand. So I want to see this, 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 something like that. If that happens, then maybe I'll try and catch it there. But it's not going to go into my trading plan because in terms of a clean setup, I missed it. It's too late now. But three days into the week, you know, I'm not one to chase trades. I really don't like that stuff because I, I lose the area of competition, the best place to enter. And where are you going to put your stop loss, right? There is here, which is currently, you know, quite a big area of value. But just under it is another demand, and another demand, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's just madness. Price could stick out the lowest low before going up, right? So, so that's that, right, guys? I thank you. I know I was talking a little bit fast. I, I, I do. I just want to get this stuff out to you as quickly as possible. It takes forever for stuff to kind of like spread out on YouTube the way I would like it to be. But you can help me by liking these videos, by sharing them, by commenting what else you want to see so that the algorithm knows that you're interested because I'm interested, but it's not sure if you're interested. If you're interested and this video helped you in any way, hit the like. It costs you nothing. If you hit the unlike button, which is fine. Comment down below and tell me why you unlike the, the video. All right. So guys, I appreciate you so much. Shake my hand, man. See you tonight if you're coming to our classes. If you're not coming to our classes and you want to use the remote course, fine. All the details are down here on the link below. Right. Shake my hand. See you guys uh, on the other side. Peace.